Hi, I go give you an overview of a neurologic examination. Now I'm going to show you how to do the neurologic examination. Hi, now I'm going to start the examination. It is a good idea to assemble all your tools in the order you're going to use so that it will make it easier to perform the examination. Now I'm going to follow the format I recommended, but not exactly. Okay, we'll start with the higher cortical function. Uh, Let's see, please tell me what is today's day, date, month, and year. October 14th, 2016. It's Friday. Yeah, when the patient says that, you can assume cognition is normal. You may also use Montreal Cognitive Assessment to do a more elaborate mental status exam. It will take about five minutes to complete the test. Do the language examination. Observe the patient's uh, communication with you. They'll tell you how good is the output. And I also, you may also ask the patient to tell you what they have done today. I came to the doctor's office to help you guys do a video. And then you, know, you, you want to do the comprehension assessment. Tell the patient to do one, two, and three step directions to follow. Do this for me. Please close your eyes. Open your eyes. Close your eyes and open your mouth. Good. Now open your eyes. Now close your eyes, open your mouth and raise your hands. Now the patient is able to follow three step directions. Then I'm going to test the naming. What do you call this? Pen. You can start off with simple things like pen. Tie. And then you can make it a little bit more difficult. Uh, then uh, you ask uh, the patient to repeat, uh, go with a word, phrase, and a sentence. Uh, please repeat this for me. Dog. Dog. Cat. Cat. Repeat this for me. Liquid electricity. Liquid electricity. There are no ifs, ands, or buts about it. There are no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Good. So able to repeat very well, uh, even complex sentences. Then we'll test uh, reading and writing. I typically write a, a sentence for the patient to read, and then I ask them to write something on their own. I'm writing. Close your eyes. Please read this. Read it loud. Close your eyes. And please write me a sentence. And make sure patient writes a whole sentence that he has an object, subject, verb, and noun, and everything. So that completes the language examination. Now we will start with cranial examination. As I told you, most of the time we don't test cranial nerve 1. All right, the examination is skipped. Now please look at me. Do you see my whole face complete? Mm -hmm. Are you missing any part of my face? No. no. Please look at me. Tell me when you see my finger. See your finger. See my finger. Yes. See my finger. See, see my finger. Yes. How many fingers Five. do you see? Two. Please look at me. How many fingers? Five. One, five. My eye, please. See this finger here? Yes. This one? Yes. This one? Yes. This one? Yes. Good. Do you see my whole face complete? Yes. Good. Now I'm doing the third, fourth, and sixth nerve examination. As a part of this examination, I'll do uh, eye movements and look for any abnormal eye movements like nystagmus. Then I'll also look for any double vision. I will also check pupillary reaction and accommodation reflex. Now please look at my finger. Please follow my finger this way. How many fingers do you see? One. How many? One. How many? One. Please follow the other side. How many? One. How many? One. Eye movements are intact. No nystagmus or no diplopia. Please look straight ahead. Ask the patient to fixate on a distant object. Check the direct and consensual reflex on both sides. 
Now I'm going to test the accommodation reflex. Please look at my finger. I'm going to move my finger to your nose. Please follow my finger with your eyes. Now you see the patient's eyes are converging and pupil are constricting. That is normal accommodation reflex. To test the sensation, you can use a tissue paper. I'm going to Please close your eyes. Every time I touch your face, please say yes. 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 So I'm examining V1, V2, and V3 distribution. You can also use your fingers to test a, a light touch. Now I'm going to test the pain sensation using a safety pin. Feel the pin? Yes. Feel the pin? Yes. Feel the pin? Yes. Feel the pain? Yes. Feel the pain? Yes. Feel the pain? Yes. Do you feel it equally on both sides? Yes. yes. Okay, now I'm going to do the seventh nerve examination. We'll start with the frontalis. Wrinkle your forehead. Frown. Now orbicularis oculi. Please close your eyes real tight. Open your eyes. Now nasalis. Make a face. Good. Now <laughs> orbicularis oris. Smile. Mentalis, um, act like you're kissing. Good. Uh, I'm going to check the platysma. Please pull your neck up on both sides. Good. Now you see both uh, sides of the face is symmetrical and upper and lower half are working normal. Now I will do the examination of um, vestibular cochlear nerve. Typically, vestibular nerve is not examined in a routine uh, neurologic examination. So I will do the cochlear examination using a 256 cycle uh, tuning fork. Now I'll do the Renise test. Do you hear the buzzing? Yes. Do you hear the buzzing? Yes. Good. Which one is stronger? Number one or number two? Number one. Number one or number two? One. I am putting the tuning fork on the mastoid in the back of the ear. Now I'll do the Weber's test. Do you hear it equally on both sides? Yes. yes. Weber's test is normal. Now I will check the vagus and glossopharyngeal nerves. Please open your mouth. Say ah. ah. Good. Now the uvula is in midline. Soft palate is moving equal on both sides. That's a normal examination. You may also do a gag reflex by touching the back of the throat with a tongue blade. Now we'll move on to the accessory nerve. Uh, it is typically examined by checking the trapezius muscle. Please shrug your shoulders. Good. It is equally strong on both sides. I also like to test the sternocleidomastoid. You can check it on both sides or one side at a time. Uh, bend your neck down. Push down real hard. I'm checking the neck flexion. Muscle is strong on both sides. Please turn to the left side. Now I'm checking the right side muscle. It is strong. Please turn to the right side. Checking the left side. It's strong. Now we'll do the hypoglossal. Please stick your tongue out. Move it side to side. Good. If one side of the uh, muscle is weak, the tongue will deviate to that side. That completes cranial nerve examination. Now we'll move on to motor examination. Uh, like I said, you can do it proximal versus distal or myotomal distribution. Now I'm going to do the um, proximal versus distal examination. Please put your arms up. Push up against me. Good. Put your elbow by your side. I'm going to push you in. You push me out. I'm doing the infraspinatus. This muscle may also show early signs of weakness in neuromuscular diseases. Keep your fingers straight. Push up. Push up. So she has normal strength in both proximal and distal muscles. And I grade the muscle strength uh, from zero to five. Zero being no movement. One being flicker of a movement. Two is movement when gravity is eliminated. Uh, three is no, uh, against gravity. 
uh, four being normal strength against resistance, push against me, and five is being normal and as good as you uh, with the patient. And I also check tone. The best way to test the tone is you gotta move the extremity in two joints. This is normal tone. You can do the same on the other side. Again, normal tone. It is slightly difficult to examine the tone in the lower extremities, but when you want to examine it, hold the lower extremity by the knee. Please relax, ask the patient to relax, and you know, drop the extremity with the gravity. When it drops smoothly, it is normal. When there's a hypertonia, the leg will go in ratchety fashion, then you know the tone is increased. Please put your hands up. You also want to look for any signs of abnormal movements like tremors, and patient does not have any. Now we'll go to cerebellar examination. Uh, I will do the finger to nose and heel vision exam. Please touch my finger, touch your nose, finger, nose, finger, nose. And the other one, finger, nose, finger, nose. Vision examination, please put your heel on your knee, run it down on your shin to your toe. Please do the same with the other side. Very good. Now I'm going to check the rapid alternating movements. Please do this like a powder cake. Do it with the other hand. Again, normal. That completes the cerebellar exam. show. Gait examination. Please walk back and forth. Normal walking. And please walk on your tiptoes. Walk on your heel. Stop. Please put your feet together. Look straight ahead and close your eyes. We are doing the Romberg test. Please open your eyes and please walk with one foot in front of the other. I am doing the tandem walking test. Thank you. Since the examination, I will test the posterior column and lateral spinal thalamic tract. To do the, to examine the posterior column, I'm going to use a tuning fork. You feel the vibration? Feel the vibration? Yeah. I'm using a 128 uh, hertz tuning fork. Feel the vibration? Yes. Feel the vibration? Yes. Again, you can go from distal to proximal. Tell me which one is stronger, the toe, the ankle, or the knee? Ankle. Now I'm going to do the pinprick examination. Again, you can do it proximal versus distal. You can also uh, do it on dermatomal distribution. You feel the pain? Pin? Yes. Feel the pin? Yes. Feel the pin? Yes. All right. I'm going to go from your toe up to your knee. Tell mm -hmm. me whether the sensation changes as I go up. Feel the pin? Yes. Tell me whether it changes. No. You can essentially do the same in the upper extremities. And then you can also do dermatomal uh, examination or peripheral nerve distribution. And you want to do the C5, C6, C7, C8, T1. Yeah, this is a C5, C6. This is C7. And this is C8, T1. So you can do it that way also. And you want to test the nerve distribution. You can test the index finger versus pinky. In a typical carpal tunnel syndrome, patient will have less sensation in the index finger compared to the pinky. Sometimes you may also want to test cortical sensation. It is tested by doing stereognosis, two-point discrimination, and uh, extinction. To do the stereognosis, you ask the patient to identify an object in the hand. Please close your eyes. Tell me what that is. Good. 
Now, to do the two point discrimination, you have two points. I'm using two pins and ask the patient whether they feel one or two. Eyes close, eyes open first. Now, I'm going to touch you with the pin. How many points do you feel? Will you please do this with the eyes closed? Ready? Two. Two. One. One. All right. Uh, make sure that there's no pattern so that the patient can not identify the sensation with the pattern. You can also test the uh, extinction. I'm going to touch Lindsay on one side or the other side or both sides, see whether she can identify that. Now, I'm going to touch your right, left, or both sides. So with the eyes closed, please tell me what I'm doing, okay? Right, left. Oh. Oh. Okay, that's the uh, extinction. Now we'll move on to reflex examination. I'm going to demonstrate Deep tendon reflexes. Uh, it's important to have a good quality hammer to elicit good reflexes. I do biceps, brachioradialis, triceps, knee, and ankle. When I do the ankle, I slightly dorsiflex the flex the foot to get a better reflex. I grade a deep tendon reflexes from 0 to 4, 0 being absent reflex, 1 is decreased reflex, 2 is normal, 3 is hyperreflexia, 4 is clonus. Now we'll do the pathological reflexes. You know, to, the best way to do Babinski is use a semi-sharp object and go along the outer aspect of the foot to the ball of the toes. The normal response will be plantar reflection of the big toe. Uh, concentrate only on the big toe. Now I'm going to do it again. You can see that this is a normal response. Pathological response, which is positive Babinski, will be dorsiflexion of your of the patient's big toe. Uh, you may also want to examine abdominal reflexes, cremastery, and bulbocavernous reflexes. So as a conclusion of the examination, you also want to auscultate the heart and the neck to make sure there are no carotid or heart diseases that can complicate neurological disease.